Hi, Ian. How are you today? Good, thanks. Good. I'm I'm going to do a little intro on you, uh, Ian, okay. which um, I'm so delighted that you're going to be part of our Accelerate 2015 conference. And I just want everyone to know that uh, a little bit about uh, about who you are and what you do, because I'm so impressed. So today I'm delighted to have Ian McKenzie, an award winning filmmaker and media activist based in our own backyard in the Pacific Northwest. And Ian's work has appeared in many places, everywhere from the New York Times, National Geographic, CBC, Globe and Mail, etc. Uh, one of the things that Ian is specializes in is doing incredible documentaries. And in 2016, I want everyone to know about, he's going to be releasing an incredible documentary called Amplify Her, a new documentary exploring women in electronic music, and we're all anxious to see it. I've seen some preliminary uh, trails on it, and I'm so impressed, Ian. Thank you. But but today, Ian and I are going to talk about a, a really a new paradigm, which is all about crowdfunding. And Ian teaches, he lectures widely on crowdfunding, and so because that's such an important area for women to consider in terms of growing their businesses, which is what Accelerate is all about, I'm going to ask you, Ian, if you could just briefly tell us how women entrepreneurs can benefit from crowdfunding. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. The crowdfunding itself, I think, is it's really uh, an exciting development um, I mean, if you look at the origins of where it came about, I mean, the two largest sites are Kickstarter and Indiegogo. Uh, many may already be familiar with them. And uh, they really came about, uh, Kickstarter began in New York City when um, they actually wanted to bring a, a DJ to town and couldn't uh, risk, uh, you know, paying the DJ up front and not sell enough tickets. And so they thought, well, what if we sold tickets first, um, you know, to the, to the crowd and then we could afford the DJ. And the idea for Kickstarter was born. Uh, Indiegogo actually comes from more of a traditional venture capital uh, route where the founders uh, actually realized that there were many really important products that uh, and ideas you know people had that they wanted to bring to the world but because they they weren't the size of you know uh, um, funds that really the big guys you know would pay attention to but there were, they just needed small you know really relatively small amounts to get started and to see to the idea and that's where Indiegogo actually came about and so, or sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to say, so Ian, one of the panels that you're going to be speaking uh, on at the conference is called Access to Capital, where mm -hmm. we are going to have traditional banking, uh, fund, uh, funders, uh, government funding, angel investing, and of course, crowdfunding, which mm -hmm. you're going to represent. And I think that one of the areas that that I always get asked by women is, if you could just highlight one to two uh, tips on what are the biggest barriers that you see when a business is considering crowdfunding. Mm -hmm. And well, I, I love the fact too the, that the panel itself, you know, represents uh, all the different aspects of really this ecosystem of capital that you know uh, women entrepreneurs have access to. And so, crowdfunding itself. It is, is not a magic bullet that, in fact, it is best suited to certain, uh, you know, either certain times of, uh, you know, when the business is either being seeded or, or growing. Uh, and it lends itself to a certain narrative arc. And this, these two are the really key aspects that I think, uh, you know, someone needs to consider before they move forward with crowdfunding is one, uh, it, crowdfunding is not that helpful necessarily for like, uh, kind of overall funding for different initiatives, it really lends itself to much more of like an exciting campaign feel where there's maybe like a specific initiative uh, or piece of the business that they're trying to grow or that lends itself to like an exciting narrative. And that's where crowdfunding, I think, really excels because uh, it's a very effective way of getting like a fair amount of people excited about something, you know, that is worth being excited about. So have you used crowdfunding yourself for any of your wonderful documentaries and projects, Ian? I have, absolutely. That's actually where I got started. It, um, early uh, in 2011, I believe, 
uh, I was working on a film which eventually became Occupy Love. And uh, myself and the director, Velcro Ripper, we raised approximately 85000 through crowdfunding uh, mm-hmm. over two campaigns. Uh, and, you know, I, I became quite fascinated afterwards with, you know, wh- why it worked. We were really just kind of flying by the seat of our pants. And um, since then, I've actually studied, you know, many campaigns and then began offering, you know, what I felt, you know, was helpful to others and working on other campaigns. And um, aside from a more recent campaign for my short, uh, which is called Healing of Love, uh, we raised 25K. Uh, I've basically helped strategize on numerous large campaigns uh, in total, raising over a million dollars. So, Ian, one of the things that I think everyone will be looking forward to is perhaps, and you know, you don't have to answer it now, we just want to whet their appetite to come and see you, Mm -hmm. but it's to take a look at how do we choose the right platform? How do we know if it's Kickstarter or, or some of the other ones that exist? Um, And hopefully you'll be able to share because I'm guessing that some businesses would lend itself better to certain platforms than others. Is that correct? Absolutely. And, uh, you know, as I speak about the two big ones, Kickstarter and Indiegogo, but there really are literally hundreds now. And some, you know, rise and fall uh, you know, quickly because they, they just can't find their place or maybe they're too specific, um, you know, the niche that they're offering. But uh, as far as the big two, the biggest differentiator that people use about what, you know, why they would choose, say, Kickstarter or Indiegogo is uh, Kickstarter is an all or nothing. So, you know, you have to hit your goal to get any of the funds, which mm-hmm. can be, you know, quite nail biting, you know, for, for many. Yeah. Uh, whereas Indiegogo, Indiegogo does offer the other option, which they call flexible funding, which is where you do keep any of the amount you raise, although uh, you still need to hit your goal. Otherwise, they take a higher percentage. So there's still so, incentive. Great. Thank you, Ian. Um, on a personal level, could you could you share um, a, maybe your own business failure story or a quick, a quick uh, uh, example of – because all of us are in business, but we always seem to make one mistake. Was there a, was there a time where you made um, a business mistake, and would you share that very quickly with us? Mm-hmm. Well, in particular, as it relates to crowdfunding, I mean, you know, as I've helped strategize now for 40 or 50 plus campaigns, I definitely have a um, kind of radar on indicators that I feel are maybe red flags, like when when people are deciding to enter into. Mm -hmm. And also um, where there's been, you know, pretty reliable failures around using the platform. And for me, the big indicator that I found is that uh, when a person doesn't really know what they're actually asking for, like they might have a very broad sense of like, you know, what, what the business is or what the idea is. But if they can't narrow it down into a way of talking about it, which other people can actually grasp onto quickly uh, and then communicate that passionately, that's the other big piece. You know, I've been involved right. in campaigns where one, the kind of ask of what they're actually doing is obscure uh, and two, that they, they're kind of like hiding behind um, not really showing themselves, not really being passionate about you know, what they truly should be passionate about. And I think that a lot of that comes with this idea of shame, actually, I think, in our culture around, you know, quote, asking for help. And, you know, one of the key things about crowdfunding, which I think is so crucial, is that it, it's actually, uh, although it's easy to confuse it with charity, like this idea of, you know, going out and asking people for uh, funds, um, that it's actually much closer uh, to the gift economy, the gift culture, which, you know, in many ways in the modern uh, world, we've sort of lost a lot of this art form, really, which, you know, old traditional older cultures knew quite well. Thank you, Ian. I think that you will be a gift for us to have at the conference because I know that many of the participants are eager to listen to you, talk to you, and find out more about your wisdom on uh, sharing about uh, crowdfunding. Mm -hmm. Um, So my last question to you is, can you share any last words of wisdom you would like to share with the with us, just as a just as a um, a, a prefix to your mm-hmm. to your presentation at the conference. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I mean as much as you know, we hear a lot of uh, stories about challenges and you know maybe other forms of capital drying up and all those things. That I mean, I, to be honest, I find it the most exciting time ever to be an entrepreneur, uh, and particularly women who are you know have really important and necessary 
ideas and businesses and all the rest that, you know, this culture absolutely needs. And so crowdfunding is one of the most exciting uh, opportunities that has emerged to actually bring these important products to the world. And I would urge, you know, anyone wanting to attend to really come with that, that confidence that, you know, the world actually needs what, you know, your gifts in service. Thank you. And so, so Ian, the panel is on Friday, October the 2nd from 10 to 1130 at the Fairmont Waterfront Hotel on, uh, I said, October 2nd. And the title is Access to Capital. What are the options available to women? And Ian McKenzie, award winning filmmaker, activist, doc, uh, incredible crowdfunding lecturer will be presenting on crowdfunding. Looking forward to meeting you in person, Ian, and thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Barbara.